Hello, everybody. Um, I only have seven minutes, so I'm just going to be jumping straight into the topic. Just first, uh, an overview of myself and Blockchain Zoo. Um, Blockchain Zoo is one of the first consulting companies for blockchain in Indonesia. We were featured in CNN, Gartner, Forbes, uh, Oxford Business Group, and we have multiple customers throughout ASEAN, uh, which are very interesting customers. We have insure tech customers. We have um, customers related to photography. And there are, there are all blockchain customers, and we've done a lot of architecting for blockchain itself. Now, here's the thing. Embarrassingly, I am not an architect. I'm an engineer, but I'm not an architect. So um, I'm not actually going to be talking a lot about the architecture of what we do. I'm going to be talking about the concepts of what we do. Now, um, we also run the association, Asociasi Blockchain Indonesia as well, but that's another story. I'm just going to skip basically straight to the next part of this. Um, when you talk about blockchain, there's one thing that you need to remember. There's no such thing as a, as the blockchain. There's something as a blockchain. There are multiple kinds of blockchain, in fact, and there are multiple layers to the blockchain itself. Uh, there is basically, uh, basically how to create your smart contracts, how to encode your nodes, how to uh, perform connections to APIs. And these kinds of new architectures are the things that we do best in Blockchain Zoo, in our association as well. Um, a blockchain strives to be uh, a whole new kind of thing, of course. But when we go to blockchain projects, actually only about 20% of the project is actually blockchain. The rest are regular architectures. The rest are regular IT. And we need to merge those two kinds of IT together. Now, here's the thing. Um, when uh, I was previously in an enterprise company, I was working for IBM before I, I, I started Blockchain Zoo. Um, and uh, I thought I knew everything about how to create an architecture. But a couple of years ago, I started venturing into the blockchain space more and more. And then I realized, hey, there's a lot of things here that I don't know how to do because they're so very different. So when we're talking about, for example, just connecting a mobile uh, application to a blockchain, okay? So we, uh, if we try to do it the regular way, which is uh, there are multiple blockchain nodes, and then there is a, a mobile application that tries to connect to one of the nodes, and you assign it as the mobile node, that doesn't work in the blockchain. That, in fact, becomes a single point of security failure. You cannot basically just have a middleware put it, put it between the mobile application and the blockchain itself and have the middleware do the actual task of actually allocating resources to each node because the single point of security failure becomes the middleware itself. When you actually want to actually create a mobile application with the blockchain in mind, you need to make sure that everything that you do, the sign-ons, the creation of new users, and everything else that you need to do to connect to the blockchain resides client side in the blockchain, in the mobile device itself. So the mobile device itself must have the capability to create new users. It needs to have the capability to basically create a new private key generated on the device and then sent into the uh, blockchain nodes. It needs to have a list of nodes to connect to. Because if it only connects to one node, then it becomes a big issue. So I don't have a lot of illustrations here right now, but uh, this is the only illustration that I have, and this actually relates to a lot of things. So you need to reconcept and reconceptualize a lot of the things that you actually create. Now, I'm going to skip a few slides, because a lot of you actually know the origins of blockchain and the origin of banks how blockchain basically is created to replace the function of everything because it's too incomplete, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to skip straight to this. Why we want to create a blockchain, and especially a genomic blockchain? Here's the thing. Um, bioinformatics or genomics uh, is a, a subset of big data analytics, which is actually very, very lucrative at the moment. A lot of the medication that you actually take, a lot of medication that you have to take, a lot of treatment, uh, that you have to take actually come from a lot of researches uh, stemming from basically the fact that microbiology, because of uh, Moore's law, has become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And you can basically sequence your genome at will these days for under 100 bucks. I think it's about 70 uh, USD, $70 if you go to 23andMe, I think. I don't know if they dropped the price or raised the price again, but that's the last time I checked. Now, here's the thing. That is the most precious data that you can have. If you think 
that your KYC data is important, your genomics data would be more important. Why? Because if you go to have insurance, if you go apply for a job, that would be something that would reflect your future, not just your present, your future health, your future value in terms of insurance policies. Now, here's the thing. That is also the subject of a lot of research. When uh, people do research, they take a subset of people. Uh, okay, I need 100 Indonesians. I need 100 Asian Indonesians. I need 100 uh, Pacific Islander Indonesians. And I need all of them, and I would like to do experiments based on genetics on them. Now, here's the thing. If we do that now, without a possibility of tracking these genomic assets, these data assets, without having the possibility of knowing which data came from whom, then we have what we have right now, which is the research companies, the medical companies, the pharmaceutical companies are actually getting the cash. We are not actually getting the revenue from it, even though it's our own DNA. So what can be proposed? And I actually have several things here, but actually I only have one minute left, so I'm not going to go through all of them. I misjudged my time, my apologies. Um, the point is, we can actually create a genomic blockchain, which basically, you sequence your genome. The genome basically is hashed and put in, inside a hash table, which is a blockchain that is used by multiple research companies. Multiple research companies can basically buy your genome. And you can basically be put into a study if you approve of your genome being used. And then within that study, you can actually be brought into um, so more towards a revenue gain. If that actually brings medicine into the table, if that brings new treatment models into the uh, table, then those treatment models, you may get royalties simply by giving your genome away, which means you can sell your genome. This sounds like science fiction. Funny thing, it's, there are a lot of companies, not just one, there are multiple companies actually trying to create this. There are several projects that are actually creating this as, as we speak within the blockchain ecosystem. I actually thought of this about a year or two ago, but it's now real, or will be soon. So a lot of things, and I've run out of time, and they're gonna kick me off the stage if I speak one more word, so I'm just gonna thank everyone and uh, welcome the next speaker.